Hello, everyone, and welcome to Cloud Native Live, where we dive into the code behind Cloud Native. I'm Itai Shakuri. I'm Director of Open Source at Aqua Security, and I'm also a Cloud Native Ambassador and will be hosting today's show. So every Wednesday, we bring a new set of presenters to showcase how to work with Cloud Native technologies. They will build things. They will break things. They will answer your questions. And this week, we have uh, Jason and Daniel here to talk to us about uh, Linkerd and emissary. Before we get to that, just a quick reminder that this is an official live stream of the CNCF and as such is subject to the CNCF code of conduct. So please do not add anything to the chat or questions that would be in violation of that code of conduct. Basically, just be nice to each other. Um, so hi, uh, Jason and Daniel. Uh, hello. Uh, would you like to introduce yourselves? I'll let you go sure. first, Jason. Oh, OK. Sounds good. Well, hey, everyone. My name's, uh, my name's Jason. As you can see, there's my Twitter there if you're looking for uninteresting comments on Twitter. Um, I do technical evangelism for Linkerd. So talk to folks about the open source project, why it's great, and why you should use it. Hey, everyone. Daniel Bryant, director of DevRel at Ambassador Labs. Uh, you may know us formally as DataWire. We rebranded earlier in the year. Uh, my background is Java development, and then I moved through to solution architecture, did a bit of operations. I was always the build person, was the classic thing, right? And fell in love with Kubernetes when it, when it came out. So much like Jason, I spend my days these, these times uh, chatting about the goodness of the cloud native tech scene, helping folks learn, because like, Sometimes it is quite complicated, this, this tech. And I like the way it I introduced the session about breaking things. I guarantee you in the live demos will break something because I, I always do, right? But it's part of the fun. Yeah. Great. Um, all right. So let's start with the basics, um, which is a little bit about Linkerd and a little bit about Emissary. Yeah, so let's go with Emissary first, if you don't mind, Daniel. Yeah, sure thing. So MSRE, CNCF uh, incubation project, we got accepted was a few months ago now. So we're in the process of moving everything across. Uh, you can check out the MSRE ingress repo on GitHub with a lot more awesome stuff there and links to getting started, which we'll run through in, in just a moment. But if you are looking for an Envoy powered ingress, I recommend MSRE Ingress, right? There others do exist, I should say, both in the CNCF and in the general uh, ecosystem. But it's fundamentally a way to get user traffic to your backend services, right? So whatever you're doing, you always need to get that user traffic, whether it's literally, you know, browser traffic or mobile app traffic or maybe curl, you know, that kind of stuff. You need to get that traffic through to the backend services. And in API Gateway Ingress, somewhat of an overloaded term. But we often do a lot of cross-cutting concerns or like non-functional requirements, as some folks call them, at the ingress, at the gateway. So things like uh, TLS, transport level security, things like rate limiting, things like auth, all that goodness kind of centralized at a single point, uh, separation of concerns, because then your backend apps do not have to worry about all those good things. So that's why you want to look at a, an API gateway, an ingress, to handle what you traditionally call north-south traffic. When we used to draw our network diagrams, like from vertical kind of space, the user was at the top. Traffic going north-south is at the edge of your data center. And that nicely leads into what a service mesh is, because that deals with east-west traffic. Over to Jason. Yeah, I muted myself right as I was ready to start talking there. <laughs> um, so yeah, great, great, great segue. So Linkerd is a service mesh. Uh, for those that, that haven't heard the term before, or at least have heard the term and, and maybe don't have a great sense of it, a service mesh is essentially uh, what you get when you add a number of proxies, a little, little load balancers, in between every service in your environment, right? So in Kubernetes, we use what we call like a sidecar model, right, to put a little proxy beside every one of your applications inside your cluster, and then that those connections between the proxies make up a mesh of services, where the proxy can handle things like encrypting the traffic between services, or um, you know, introducing failures, or um, you know, adding adding metrics, right? So generally, think of the features of a service mesh as being related to security, reliability, or observability. So making it so that more of your calls succeed, giving you better insight into your calls. So if you've got you know 20 different apps in five different languages, you don't have to have everybody put in metrics data, right? Instead, the proxy collects standard metrics about everything and then feeds that up into uh, 
into the, the control plane for that mesh. So you, when you talk about surface mesh, we talk about control plane and data plane, something for humans or computers to interface with the mesh or to the mesh with, and then the actual layer that carries your data. So Linkerd is, is the original surface mesh, or at least we say it's the original surface mesh. And I work for Boynt, the folks that make Linkerd. Uh, it is recently graduated from the CNCF, right? So that means it's a CNCF project and has met the criteria for graduation that happened I think two, three weeks ago, mm -hmm. uh, which is big news for us. Congratulations. Uh, oh, thank yeah. you. Yeah, we're we're really excited. Uh, and then Singh asked in the chat if it's if it's available for beginner, if this talk is for beginners, and I would say absolutely. What we're gonna do is get started with Emissary and then get started with Linkerd and show you how you can use these two CNCF projects to get the best of both worlds, right? You get all that, all that rich functionality that you get from Envoy at the ingress without necessarily taking on some of the some of the complexity that Envoy can introduce when it's when it's the proxy in your mesh. Sound good? So yeah, so so we, we talked about some um, functional or non-functional uh, features that both uh, products deliver. And the differentiation between them is that one is uh, mostly concerned with uh, traffic that is coming from the outside world into your cluster and which is Emissary, right? And the other one is uh, Linkerd, which is mostly concerned with what happens within the cluster after the traffic is there, right? Absolutely. Right. Um, all right, good. So how easy it is to make the two uh, work together? Well, so well, to give you a spoiler real quick, super easy. <laughs> like there's effectively almost no integration to do between them. And it's it's really very nice. And we'll we'll do that as we go through our quick start guides. Cool. It's like All a right. one line every time. It's always good, right? Like, you know, like famous last words, but it should be one, one line <laughs> in the CLI. All right. Uh, yeah, let's get let's get to it. Awesome. Can I get a screen share, please? Apologies to folks if you see me looking to the slight side. I've got my restream window, my broadcasting window to the right. So I'll yeah, be looking at this just to check it's all working. I think at the moment I'm seeing just the three of us. Yeah, yeah. Screen. Um, Is that right? Oh. Your screen share. Oh, it's not. Are you sharing? Oh, is it working? Yeah. <laughs> is it not That's working? Fine. Oh, there you go. Is that it? Pause there for a second. Does that look good? No, it is. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. it's my, my bad. I think with some browser issue there. Awesome. So just to um, recap, as in, if you do want to pop along, um, like we mentioned, the, there's the getting started uh, for emissary ingress. We've also got the GitHub repo, so you can pop along to um, emissary ingress. Scroll down. All your getting started links are, are there as well. So it's a good resource. We'll share all of these um, links in the CNCF uh, Slack channel as well later on. So if you do miss them, don't worry. We'll share them, and then. Pop along to linkerd.io. See Jason's face on the front page here. He's famous, right? Linkerd famous. Um, and a nice kind of jumping off point uh, to land on Linkerd page here. And Jason also shared earlier on the Linkerd um, 101 kind of service mesh uh, intro and, and how to get started. I've learned a lot from the point folks, like from William and so forth over the years. Uh, I, you know, the first time I heard service mesh being talked about was on the buoyant website, I think pretty much on the Linkerd website. So these are great references. Uh, if you want to get started, you kind of, I often talk about building mental models, like you have to understand the tech at a fundamental level before you really get the full value. And these blog posts are a great way um, to, to do that. Awesome. So we have, it's here, I'll literally show you, if we go to the, actually the, this one here, uh, this is the emissary uh, GitHub repo. Scroll down to the getting started. You can jump into our tutorials here, getting started. I'm going to install with Helm. I think this is the easiest way to get started. I'm going to use Helm 3 the latest version, and it's the easiest jump to go towards sort of production-like uh, environment. You can use YAML, um, you can use, we've got an, uh, like a CLI tool, but again, if you're running in production, you're probably gonna be using something like Helm. You're actually probably gonna be using Helm, right? So we're gonna use Helm uh, to get started with MS3. So if I click install with Helm, I have in my browser window, just to show nothing up my sleeves here, a blank Kubernetes cluster, courtesy of Siva. Jason connected us up the, this morning. So you can see here, I've done a K, I've aliased for kubectl or kubectl. That's controversial how you pronounce it, but we'll just use K in this example, right? That is my kubectl CLI tool. I'm saying K, get services at the top here. Blank, you know, list of your standard Kubernetes services coming back. And I've done a get pods, and there's a couple of things that Sivo have installed around the CSI and, and some node management and so forth. But fundamentally, 
nothing up the sleeves, empty cluster, right? And we shall get started with running through the, the getting started guides. So I've installed Helm locally on my Mac. I have added the DataWire repo. We, we used to be called DataWire Ambassador Labs, so that's why we've still kept the DataWire um, branding here. Um, and I will literally run this command here, Helm install ambassador. I'm going to change it slightly just to make it easy on some things we've got later on. If I go to my cheat sheet over here. Uh, I wanted just to put a namespace in there. So I do Helm install ambassador. If it's ambassador, looks good. You do the enable AES false. Oh, I've left my config file open, my bad. Um, do the enable uh, AES false on the command line options for Helm, or you can do it via RAML, uh, bear, uh, values.yaml, uh, and that just installs the open source emissary. So we've got a commercial offering, uh, like open core, adds more value on top, but emissary, the open source project, you just set that flag, you've got emissary installed. Oh, and I did not create the namespace. Rookie mistake on my part. There we go. Already I've got some issues, right? Let me create the namespace. <laughs> like, this is guaranteed. I'll clear my screen. To break things. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. For a second, Daniel. Um, yeah. So we've got a bunch of links in the chat. So the things that you see Daniel going through, uh, or that you'll see me going through when we when we get to it, are all going to be covered in the links that that have been shared. So Brilliant. if you're missing any of them, please sound off, and we'll send it again. Awesome stuff, Jesus. That's, that's great. a Let good me... opportunity to remind everyone that if you have questions or comments, please type them in the chat. We're monitoring that, so we we can address them. Super. This is all ticking away. We're getting some warnings there because of um, different versions of Kubernetes and things being deprecated. So I know that some of those are raised issues that we're tracking as well, depending on what versions of Kubernetes uh, cluster you're installing, you may see different um, warning messages there. But that looks good. If I do k get service all, now you see at the bottom here, we've got our ambassador admin and ambassador all set up and running. Great stuff. Uh, if I now follow the instructions. I can create a mapping here. We'll install first the quote of the moment service as our demo service. I'll copy that text, pop my browser. I'll just clear the screen to move everything up to the top. To Kupat will apply that link. That should install deployment and service for the quote of the moment can you, service. Can you clarify what mapping means? Yeah, great point. Um, great point, Itai. So a mapping is a custom resource. So we've created a custom resource that maps a URI, a path, uh, into a backend service. Um, so I haven't actually, I'll, I'll spin that up in just a second. I'm literally, now I've just installed my service and my deployment. Hopefully folks are sort of roughly familiar with that in Kubernetes land. We're spinning up a container within a pod, within a deployment, within a service. And then to your question, Itai, you can see here, here's what the mapping looks like. We have created a, a custom resource as part of the Helm install. We define what a mapping is, and the mapping is quite a rich construct. Uh, you can start super simple, which we've done here. If I bump up the resolution, we've literally said, create a mapping, call it quote backend, and um, prefix slash backend. If you hit the IP address of our um, ambassador service, slash backend, you'll be routed to the quote uh, service running on port 80 by default. Does that so, answer your question, uh, Ty? Uh, yes, and then a follow-up question. So how is this uh, related to Ingress uh, resource? Yeah, we all, great question. We also support Ingress. Um, so the, it's, it's very similar, to be honest. So you see a lot of the uh, other Ingresses doing their own sort of thing. Or some folks use annotations to define um, the, the routing, the mapping. Um, some folks have created custom resources like we have. So we... Um, when we created Amb oh, well, Ambassador, uh, now MSR Ingress, it was like three or so years ago. And the like, custom resources weren't a thing initially. We were using annotations. And Ingress wasn't very well defined. So our evolution has been from annotations to custom resources. Yeah. And then we also went back and supported the Ingress spec when it became more solid as well. Uh, folks do want to know more about this. I'm happy to like chat um, sort of probably a bit sort of separate from what we're talking about today. But there is quite a storied history of Kubernetes Ingress. And because it, it's not simple is the honest answer. Like getting traffic from the user to the back end is not simple. And the like the SIG networking folks have done an amazing uh, job over the years. And we've sort of followed in their footsteps with a with a customer source for, for um, emissary ingress called mapping. Great, thanks. Thank you. Good, good question. Yeah, I, I see this day in, day out, right? But I forget that this is a new construct with a lot of folks. So it's a great question there from a tie. Uh, awesome. So we have installed our service. Looks good, right? Um, now I'll just copy that. Um, you know, actually, I think I've already got that set up. If I, oh, 
Where's my terminal gone? There we go. My laptop is struggling today. Um, if I just bring up LLL, you can actually see I've got the quote backend.yaml already if I guess that. Um, you can see here it's exactly what we had on the, on the interwebs, right? So I've just saved that locally. Let's get rid of that. If I now do a K, apply, file, quote, backend, looks good. We've got a mapping. And because it's a custom resource, I can do K, get mapping like that. And that's, I think it's quite cool when you, you know, regardless of the project, if it's got a custom resource, it's kind of Kubernetes native, right? You can get extra info. I could describe, for example, the mapping and look in for more info. So super useful. You know, that's why I think following along with the sort of Kubernetes native way, and Jason will touch more on this later on, um, you know, both Emissary Ingress and Linkerd really embrace the Kubernetes resource model, the Kubernetes way of doing things. And it makes our lives as developers and operators that much easier because it kind of follows the principle of least surprise. If you can do K get pods, you can do K get mappings. Same deal, right? So that looks good. So let's pop back to our. Oh, there, there was a question about uh, how does mapping get impacted by using network policy? So what's the uh, maybe relationship between the two? Yeah, so I'd see the, the mappings are sort of more fundamental, like you're literally mapping a path or some other details onto a back end service. If you want to layer on additional security, like you can do some of this via service meshes. So Jason can answer some more of that as well. Um, and you've always got to bear in mind other um, policies you've got in place. But I, if, if you're learning this, I would start with a kind of blank cluster like we're doing here and layer up your learning. Get your routes first on, get your mappings, very basic front end, you know, user to back end service, layer in your service mesh, see all the value you get there, and then start looking at things like, um, you know, a lot of folks use like Calico, right? One of the other different um, lower level constructs and networking, OPA, Open Policy Agency, super popular. You can layer all those things on to add extra security, add extra protection, and they are great for production use cases. But if you're learning, my advice is start small and layer it on top. Okay. Yeah. Just to add a, a tiny bit there, right? So network policy is that like really like layer three, right? Like it's like firewall and, and components like that. So uh, when I say layer, I'm talking about the, the OSI model, right? And like the different layers of your network stack. When you think of an ingress or in this case, emissary and its mappings, that's all really like layer seven stuff. So up at the, up the application side. So obviously if your ingress can't connect to a backend, then yes, network policy will will have an impact, but generally it helps to think of them in, in totally different places, right? Put that in the in the security, like that network yeah. security yeah. bucket. Yeah, good chat, Jason. And if you are using a cluster within, say, your commercial environment, your um, so your company, you may bump into exactly what Jason said there, where you know by default, certain network policies do disallow things. So um, that's totally worth checking. Like. Yeah, if you can start with something maybe even like local, kind, uh, mini cube, like that can remove all that uh, challenge for you. Awesome. Uh, let's go to grab the IP of your MSRE ingress. So I've literally copied this, pop back into my terminal. I'll just clear a screen again to make it a bit more obvious. I thought, uh, oh, I've missed my um, namespace. Put the namespace in there. Slash N ambassador. Like so, and hopefully if I echo, this is famous last words, right? If I just echo for, for you folks watching, um, what's going on there? We can see we've got um, an IP address. And if, again, if I was just to do um, K get service and just do all, um, you can actually see our ambassador um, uh, pod within the ambassador namespace, ambassador service sorry, within the ambassador namespace has got the external IP. We've set it up as a load balancer type service. That's why I'm, this is a little cheat sheet just for very quickly getting the IP address of, uh, of your um, uh, ambassador instance. Awesome. Let's pop back to the um, web page. If I now just do a curl on on this, back to the terminal, set up the curl. Ta -da! We're literally curling um, the IP address we just loaded in there. <clears throat> slash backend, because if you remember going back to the mapping, I'll just switch, switch back to the screen. We set up the mapping to be slash backend, redirecting to our very simple quote backend service that we deployed and and you can see it running we're getting a very nice quote back and i can keep hitting that endpoint and we just get pithy quotes courtesy of flynn our lead uh, ambassador emissary ingress engineer um we come up with some very witty quotes <laughs> hopefully there 
So that is pretty much, there's, there's some other stuff you can follow um, below if you want to go through. I've talked about KGET mappings. If you do want to set up TLS, uh, there's a nice page. We can share the um, link here uh, using Cert Manager. And then the Ambassador Edge Stack does a lot of this stuff automatically, but the uh, Emissary is the open source project. Best to use Cert Manager. Um, I've got one pre-baked, which I can share later on if you like. But if you do want TLS termination at the edge with a free uh, TLS cert, loving Let's Encrypt, loving the Acme protocol, and this guides you through using Helm and the uh, Jetstack Cert Manager um, and gets you all installed and all set up there. I won't do that now. I'll move on to Linkerd install, but, um, but I always advise TLS, particularly if you're in prod, for example. I'll pause there, Jason. Anything you want to add on that before I move on to the Linkerd stuff? No, right. Just just for folks that are are watching, right. So what we've got now is traffic from the internet to our cluster, right. So that's our our north house. So we've gone to the to the front door of the cluster, which is emissary. Our mapping, you know, tells us, you know, your ombudsman how to tell people where to go, right, or our traffic where to go. And now we're going to add Linkerd. Right, we're not going to do we're not going to do a bunch of special config, and we're going to be able to get statistics on the traffic that's coming in, as well as encrypt everything from you know that outside to the front door, and then from the front door into the actual you know service that you're getting inside the cluster. And something you said earlier, Jason, which you know my background is Java, but I did a lot of Go and Ruby, and I remember when I worked on my first microservices projects, I had to re-implement all the things Jason just mentioned there in language specific libraries. Yeah, if I wanted observability, Java library. If I wanted observability, the Ruby services, Ruby library, Go library. Linkerd, by abstracting some of that to the proxy, means that as a Java developer, as a Ruby developer, as a Go developer, I don't need to worry about those individual libraries now. And more importantly, I don't need to maintain them because Linkerd maintains that for us. So I remember when I first bumped into Linkerd, I was like, this is awesome. <laughs> Absolutely, as a, as a polyglot type programmer, right? Cool. So I've now fired up the Linkerd 2.10 uh, Getting Started Guide. Again, we'll share the links in the channel. Um, I have already installed, I, I know my kubectl version is good to go. Nice to check that in the docs. I've already installed the latest uh, Linkerd CLI, just because downloading on the interwebs can be a bit dodgy when we're doing live demos. So I'm all set there. I'll let you now start from the Linkerd version. So I'll copy that. Go back to my terminal. I'll clear the screen again, just to make it a bit easier to read. If I just pop in Linkerd version, Good to go, right? 2.10 uh, client version. Excellent. I will be chopping and changing here, but I'll go back to um, well, see, sorry, pre flight checks, of course. So, so this is a SIVO cluster, right? So they install a cloud hosted K3S. So we can check that like our, this K3S cluster is a valid target for Linkerd and that Daniel has the right permissions for what he needs to do just by running this, this CLI command. I love running the checks as well, like because it just it just looks so good, right? <laughs> and uh, so I'm a big fan of the Linkerd CLI. Super easy. So, right, I'll just paste in now the uh, the install command. Oh, I obviously did not copy paste. Clear the screen. Import that. Install. Just going through all the install stuff now. This looks great. Well, then if I scroll down in the background, we'll then run our checks again. Once Linkerd is installed, again, you get that nice visualization, that nice feedback. So I did a demo with Thomas Rampelberg for KubeCon or EU, I think a year or two ago, where we did multi-cluster Linkerd and the checks were just fantastic there. We're not gonna dive into multi-cluster much today, um, but I did the Linkerd checking commands, like they can seem sort of trivial at times because you see lots of green ticks, but when stuff's going wrong, they're super useful. So I'll run that again. Um, just really nice to check all the pods are up and running. Uh, when you do a multi-cluster, can you talk to each other? Can the connections, do the connections work? So do not underestimate the value of these check commands. They are super useful. Well, yeah, so just a little talking while we're while we're seeing this this go through, right? So what what happens there? You saw them run the command Linkerd, Linkerd install, right? And then pipe it over to kubectl apply. So that is that is generating all the YAML that you're going to use for the install. So we've got examples doing it with like a GitOps flow or installing via Helm. So first thing to note, the CLI and the Helm charts use the same templates, right? Same template, same templating engine. So the values that you set in one are applicable to the other, right? So they stay, they allow you to, to go back and forth really easily. Um, and then you know it'll just it'll just generate standard YAML that you can save and, and share out. Um, I guess that's really the, the big thing with the install command. So if you don't pipe it over to kubectl apply, it's just going to output a bunch of YAML right to your terminal that you could save off somewhere. Loving the GitOps flow. 
Jason knows that. So we've like when we're in prod, we typically would do that because just you know easier to manage, easier to upgrade, and so forth. But like, I love the CLI for getting started, but yeah, plus one on the on the YAML on the install. Status checks look good, and just to Jason's point there, if we just do now, K get service all right. You can see there's a lot more stuff installed now. We've got our ambassador, we've got our quote service in the default namespace, then we've got a LinkedIn e namespace with we'll all the goodness installed there as well. And we'll install a bit, install a few more things now. So that all looks good. I'll just clear the screen again. Move on to the next install instructions, and this is for installing the visualization tools. Okay, LinkedIn e is exactly what Jason was saying in terms of piping through, running the install generating the YAML, piping it through on the command line to kubectl apply. The, the empty dash is basically saying, take what we're piping through and apply it. And that's what you're seeing here, all, the, all this coming through here. So while this is running, uh, we can maybe adjust one question here uh, about uh, whether LinkedIn can uh, provide us the reliability or other functionality for non-HTTP applications. And actually, there's a good uh, opportunity to clarify what kind of proxy uh, LinkedIn is using. Yeah, so it, it is a great question. Thank you very much. So Linkerd is actually, I don't know if it's unique among the service meshes, but they're, they're, most service meshes use Envoy as that sidecar proxy, right? Linkerd does not. Linkerd is a custom, a custom built proxy called the Linkerd2 proxy that's written in Rust. And we can, I can talk about that in way more detail than anyone here probably wants right now. <laughs> uh, but it is, um, it's, it's very fast and, and it's very, it's very simple. Um, so for non HTTP traffic, we can get, we can get metrics for TCP connections. So I can probably show some of that when we do the demo, although may have to, may have to take that offline, but we can show when, when you're, when you are a non HTTP request or non gRPC request, right? We can get, we can get some details around the, the bulk TCP stream, but you're not going to get like request level information, right? Cause it's just, it's just a bulk connection going back to that OSI layer thing. Right. If it's layer four, we can tell you that it connected and how much data is going. But that's really that's really all we're going to see without understanding how to read the underlying protocol. Um, so you generally get it for you generally get interesting information for HTTP and gRPC traffic. Very nice, very Thank nice. You. Just a shameless plug as well. I did a podcast with Oliver from Buoyant. Um, my colleague, um, Wes Rice from InfoQ, did a, another podcast with William, I think, as well. Um, so if you do want to know more details about the Rust proxy and like why the, why Buoyant chose Rust and how the libraries around it evolved, I learned a bunch from Oliver and, and William. So check out this podcast on, on InfoQ uh, if you do want to dive in, because I think it's just super interesting to know about the tech, right? That, I think, is a good point to hand over to you, Jason. Yeah, for the integration? Sound like a plan? Yes, just trying to figure out how to get off mute, but yeah, absolutely. <laughs> nice, let me stop sharing my screen a minute, uh, find out and restream. Uh, and voila. All right. So we're sharing our Sivo cluster just via the kubeconfig um, files. So Jason, we're jumping in, following my footsteps. All right, let me know when we can see my terminal. Let me see. Yeah. All right, so right now, right, actually I should probably bring that back. So right now we've got a bunch of stuff running right in the environment. Uh, give me one sec. I've got a little laser pointer that I try and show off every chance I get. Um, so we have um, we have a bunch of things going on. So we've got Linkerd, uh, the Linkerd pods, right? So these are the components that make up the control plane for our service mesh. We also have the Linkerd vis components, which are um, which are the the dashboard, right? Which I, I can show you all in a minute. Right, and this is, this, the dashboard is a nice way to visualize, that's why we use the word biz, what's happening inside your cluster, right? Um, but you'll note all of them have, like when we see ready, we see two of two, right? So that's, that's two, pod, or two containers per pod, right? And the reason there are two is because uh, there is both the, the app that does whatever thing it's supposed to do, then the Linkerd proxy sitting beside it, right? So that we can, we can have it in the mesh. So our ambassador pods, we've got our three ambassador pods in that deployment. None of them are in the mesh. Same thing, quote of the day, right, is not meshed. So if I pop out, I didn't think I was going to need this, but if I pop, pop out another window and pop out a dashboard, I've got one right here. So Linkerd, no, oh, give me just one sec. For our export, yeah. Um, Linkerd, viz. Dashboard. Sorry, that's so small. Let me make that a little bit bigger. 
if I pop open a dashboard here, right, I'll be able to see into my into my cluster, but I'm not actually going to see anything anything interesting, right? Because it's just um, like there's very little in the mesh beyond Linkerd itself, right? But we're gonna we're gonna fix that. So we're gonna we're gonna inject both our application and uh, and ambassador. So let's do that. So let's start off with with quote of the day. So let's do k get deploy dash and default, right? It was in the default namespace, right? We've got we've got quote, right? So we'll just specify it. We'll uh, we'll output it as YAML, right? So we're gonna output the the deployment details as YAML, so that I can use the Linkerd CLI to uh, add the proxy to the cluster. And we'll all all we're doing. Right when we do it, is adding an annotation to the pod spec that says Linkerd inject enabled. So add the Linkerd proxy to this, and then Linkerd will do the rest. Inject dash pipe k apply dash f. Oops. So I've got lots of opportunities for mistakes here because I mistype constantly. Right. So get the deployment as YAML. Add our annotation, send it back to the Kubernetes API. I alias kubectl decay because I can't reliably type kubectl with a cube kettle or whatever you want to call it. So now if we go kget pods, we're going to see just inside this namespace, the old one's going away and the new one's starting up with some data. Go back over to that dashboard, right? And now all of a sudden default is coming in. We're going to start getting some traffic for it, right? And if I send some requests over to the back end, We'll see that pop up. Oh, hey, look! Looks like every call is successful. You know, the latency is like super tiny, and we have very few requests per second. But still, nothing for ambassador. So let's fix that. So now, same thing. K get deploy deploy and ambassador ambassador. Right. So we're gonna grab ambassador itself. Liberty inject dash dash ignore. Oops, ignore no. Uh, it's skip. That's it. Skip inbound ports. All right. So what we're doing here, this is this is the ingress. So in general, when we inject when we inject the service inside our kube cluster or a, a pod or a deployment inside our kube cluster, right? What we want to do is we want to get traffic both incoming and outgoing from that pod because that pod's only talking to other things inside the mesh, or is generally going to be talking to other things inside the mesh. The emissary ingress, or any ingress that you're using, right, like doesn't actually, doesn't actually, um, it doesn't actually, we don't, ever, we're never going to care about traffic coming into the ingress from a service mesh perspective, right? We are, um, we are about, you know, east-west traffic, so traffic between services in your cluster. So that's a lot of words for, let's just skip inbound traffic, web traffic to this thing, because we don't really care about it. And then we're just going to go ahead and pass that right back to the Kubernetes API. So same inject command with a little bit of extra flavor. You don't need to do this if you don't want. Like you don't need to skip the ports, but it's it's worth doing. Uh, and oh, sorry. <laughs> Let me skip this. I forgot to output it as YAML, right? So Linkerd inject works with, works with YAML. Cool. It gave me a warning because I didn't, you know, we created this with Helm, not with a K apply, but it's it's totally fine. So now we can do K get pods dash n ambassador. Right. We see that there are new pods spinning up for ambassador now with now with two of two. Right. So we have the the normal ingress plus a Linkerd proxy. And in a minute, if we keep refreshing this. We're going to start to see traffic coming from Ambassador through to um, through to our um, through to our uh, quote of the quote of the moment quote of the day. Give me one sec. Let's force this guy to refresh a little bit faster. Sorry, lots of refreshing going on. It might not have hit it yet, right? Because we've only got one of the one of the three. Oops, wrong namespace. Sorry. 
So let's see how long this is going to take. Uh, give me just one sec. Can't get pods and ambassador. All right, well, we've got this pre-baked, so I'll, I'll actually, is now a good time to swap over clusters? Yeah, I think so, Jason. It? So it sometimes takes a while just to spin up all the different pods yeah. in it and uh, get everything aligned. You can see from our previous experience, we have learned to have pre-baked things good to go to shortcut the time, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, so, so this cluster, we did the we did the same thing, right? And we can do k get pods dash n ambassador, right? On on this cluster, we're actually using the ambassador edge stack because that's I, I like it. It's a bit it's got some some features that I I use an awful lot. Um, but we see that the ambassador ingress in this case, I only have the one pod is injected. Right now, we can actually see some traffic. Now, what we've done, so you saw the mappings that Daniel showed earlier, right? We can actually get our mappings, right? And, you know, the thing I love, I love about CRDs or custom resource definitions is like all my native Kubernetes tooling like continues to work the way I expect, right? So I just tap, I don't know, mappings.getambassador.io, right? I just start typing map, hit tab, it completes for me. I want to look at all namespaces. It's the standard CLI that I'm used to. Uh, and I've got a bunch of stuff going on. Like I, I made it easy on myself. Instead of having to do that Linkerd viz dashboard, I actually just hit, and actually anyone who feels like it can just hit this dashboard.sevo.59s.io, and you'll see this. There we go. I'm, I knew I had the link somewhere. You'll see this, right? So we've got, you know, we can see Ambassador itself, right? Who it's, so we can see the deployment. We can see what what pods that deployment is talking to, right? We can see the total number of requests per second heading through, our response time, um, every endpoint that it's going to, right? So we're hitting a quote service, and that's responding really quickly. So we're going and looking at at the same thing that Daniel just showed us, right? Uh, or the same thing that Daniel just installed. We can see that from Ambassador, we're getting a, a get method to the to the root of this path. So I changed it from backend just to the root, so it would be a little bit easier to route to. Um, and you know we're entirely successful. We could tap live traffic if we wanted to, right? So let's just see, hey, what's coming in, right? And this is this isn't stuff that's instrumented in quote, right? We didn't have to put in a metrics library. We don't have to we don't have to do anything anything special, right? We're just getting this data because the proxy's there and in our space. We also haven't created like while we do need a mapping, a custom resource for the mapping, right? Inside Linkerd, everything else is just oh. Great, I'm getting an error, but we're gonna close that, right? Um, inside inside Linkerd, right? Because it just works with Kubernetes native services and Kubernetes constructs, we didn't do, you know, I haven't created like a virtual gateway or service or anything special, right? I'm using Kubernetes services. I'm using a standard mapping or or an ingress if I want to use an ingress via emissary. Although I find the mapping really easy to do, so I I use the mappings. Um, and and all our stuff just continues to work the way we expect, but but marginally better. And that that integration point. So we were we were digging. We used to have a, comp, a more complicated setup in our docs for integrating with Ambassador Emissary, right? Because we assumed that you know there'd be something in particular about the way it worked that we needed to override. But we were we were digging in, in preparation for this and in preparation for just giving people best practices for using Emissary and Linkerd because we think the combination is great. And it turns out. Because Emissary's default behavior is entirely Kubernetes native. And so now we can stack these two CNCF projects, get header-based routing, get rate limiting, get you know that nice stuff at the ingress with these detailed metrics about what your environments are doing. Right? I can look through all my namespaces. I can see you know, where are things going well, like where do I get the high success rates and where do I have apps that have a problem? Right? All all done, all integrated with that, all integrated with that ingress. Right with no with no special configuration. So I think that's that's pretty cool, and that's the the bulk of what you know we really want to show today. I love that as a key takeaway, Jason, because that's something you and I were discussing. But like, this is really easy. Like, it just works. But again, that's the that's the power of like standardization. Had to begin with the CNCF, right? All the great work going on here. If you follow the Kubernetes resource model, follow all like you know. I, I know you 
perhaps want to talk about SMI, things like service mesh interface, all these good things. If you follow the standards, like it, it kind of just works or it should just work and mostly does. Uh, and you're also not locked into certain things as well if you embrace, you know, that is one argument for some folks using the ingress uh, rather than the mapping customer source. Because our, our, cust our mapping customer source is not directly interchangeable with say, you know, another ingress, uh, for example. Um, but in reality, like what's the chance of swapping out ingresses? I, I remember back in my Java days, I always, you know, wrote defensive code around databases swapping out. And in my like 20 year Java career, I think I swapped out one database, like Postgres for MySQL. And that was a completely custom reason, reason why we did that, right? So look for your abstractions. But again, I'm with Jesse, I'm obviously biased. But for me, the mapping resource is super simple, whereas the ingress stuff tends to be more complicated. Powerful, but a bit more complicated. I'm a big fan of minimal code. You know, less code I write, less config I write, less stuff I've got to maintain. So that's why I like the mapping. That's why I like the Linkerd config. It's super, super easy. Yeah, and, and expand on that, right? Like Ingress is like people think they're interchangeable, but they're not, right? Like there's a ton <laughs> of things you can put in every Ingress that are going to be specific to the one that you're using, right? So they tried to they they worked on like I know the networking group has worked on Ingress routes and and expanding or was it the gateway API spec? That's right. Yes. Right. Yes. Yep. Um, which which I believe Emissary fully supports, right? Or at least it's planning on. Yeah, at least supporting. the current version. But I think it's like still in beta, but we do support that in Emissary. Yeah, yeah. So, so any like that's changing anyway, right? So there's not. I don't. I don't think there's any concern about using a little bit like it. You can see. Well, here, let me just show a mapping, right? Um, so I've got like I've got like five mappings in this in this um, in this document here. So let's just do. Let me close this out, right? So here's here's the cool the quote mapping, right? So if you're familiar with an ingress, this isn't like this isn't crazy complicated, right? We give it a name, you know, the prefix that we're using. So what path are you going to hit on the API? What host? So what host name do I want to respond to? And then what service am I going to, right? And that's like that's the extent of it, right? And it's it's a pretty pretty simple and straightforward thing. Here's like a complex one. So here we see the let me make that a bit bigger. Right here's here's for our dashboard. So Linkerd dashboard uses WebSockets, so we have to get to get a bit more complicated. I'll like I'll never like I I was working with a different ingress at one point and trying to get WebSockets to work over that ingress and like the the pain and suffering that I went through <laughs> going through the docs trying to get the the config right for this for this particular component was was pretty high. When I looked at how to do it in Besser, it's like oh allow upgrade WebSocket and I'm done. Right, it's not. Anyway, it's it's not a far. I don't think it's a far step if you're looking at at ingress route versus mapping would be my my takeaway there. Well, that's that's really awesome, I have to say. Um, and uh, if anyone has any questions, you can type them in the chat. In the meantime, um, what other things could we do with either uh, emissary and the mapping or linker D? Um, like we got the the setup working now. What can we make of it? Yeah, so all all sorts of stuff, right? So we've got <laughs> on, on this one every like every one of these URLs has a valid like y'all can hit them up in the chat, right? Like um, they've got a valid HTTPS cert that I didn't like I didn't do beyond you know defining a host, right? So this was actually with the this was actually with with the edge stack, but in the edge stack, right? I just I just define a host. I say I want to use my email address for the Acme provider, which I shouldn't share this on the internet, but there you go. <laughs> uh, please don't spam me, folks. Uh, I just, you know, I just put in the host name, and then it's going to go through and, and auto generate certificates for me, right? Which is, which is really, really super handy, right? And then and the other stuff that I love, or right, what I really love about this integration is, is for us, it can sometimes be a challenge with an ingress to like integrate directly because we have to say, hey, listen, should should it do some non-standard behavior? Here's how we override it so that it works well with the mesh, right? Especially when we start getting into SMI constructs. So, so SMI is the service mesh interface where it allows you to do more complex things with traffic than, than the basic Kubernetes services let you do, like multi-cluster, like traffic splitting, or you know, if you look at Argo rollouts or Flux, right? They use they use the SMI spec, or they use, yeah, they use the SMI spec to shift traffic between things. Well, they create and for those who don't jump, no, no, just a clarification. The SMI is a different CNCF project, right? That is like abstracting uh, other service meshes, and Linkerd is one of them. Uh, just to clarify for those who don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. Thank, thanks for adding that detail. Um, 
you know, so, so, but they, they rely on like this kind of, um, we call it a apex service inside Kubernetes so that you can ship traffic around. Well, that, that thing really, it need the service mesh needs to handle that, right? And it does it with intelligent routing. Now with, with emissary, because it defaults the routing of the cluster IP, we can handle things like multi-cluster or, you know, complex rollouts with no special configuration. But if you're looking for in a particular service, you want to do sticky sessions, or you want to route to a particular pod based on some criteria, you can do all that in emissary and still have Linkerd carry out the default behavior for the rest of your, your traffic, you know, with, with no special configuration beyond what you do in Linkerd. Does that, does that make sense? Just to give a bit yeah. more context there, Jason. I think because like like we level, I guess from MS3 side, we level all the service meshes, right? But the native sort of integration is much simpler when everything dials into the Kubernetes best practice way of doing things. Like a lot of folks, a lot of the service meshes will use uh, endpoint um, resolvers, endpoints in Kubernetes, as opposed to the actual like looking at the services and getting the the metadata, the IP addresses. And there's good reasons for doing that, but it also adds a lot of complexity on top. And I'm I've been with, I, I feel the pain, Jason. I won't mention any service mesh names, but where there was a few like, why is that doing that? And it's just because like sort of the responsibilities overlapped, right? Like the north, south, and east, west, the emissary and other service mesh. Like it was like it was almost a you know if I anthropomorphize it, it was almost like a, you know an argument between the two things. Oh, that's my responsibility. No, it's my responsibility. Where there's a clearer separation of concerns in. MSRA and Linkerd, because we literally hand off at the abstraction points that are native to Kubernetes, the services in this case, right? And if folks haven't bumped into things like endpoints and maybe even haven't gone you know, deeper into pods, uh, it's worth a little Google. So the Kubernetes docs are fantastic. And just understanding how endpoints and endpoint slices work, particularly when you go to more, more multi-cluster stuff. I learned a bunch from Thomas when I was learning about Linkerd multi-cluster. Um, it, you know, again, I don't personally code much at that level, but I still enjoyed learning about what was happening underneath. And it gave me a bigger appreciation for, well, if you just stick to the services, stuff just gets easier, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, okay. And what are, what are the, uh, some other uh, emissary features that maybe you can highlight? Uh, I mean, we got the traffic in. What can we do uh, to it or with it? With emissary, something more than just bringing it in. Yeah, Did you great question. Uh, encryption. Yeah, for sure. And I, in some ways, one thing I, I often say to folks I'm chatting to in the community is, when a ingress is doing its job well, and I think this really applies to the service mesh too, you actually don't notice too much about it. So doing demos for all these things is really hard, right? Because like it should just work. But you always want to think about things like security is a big one. 100% what you said there. So transport level security, uh, Jason showed you edge stack with um, integrated Let's Encrypt Acme protocol support. You can use Cert Manager for emissary ingress. I've got a demo up and running of, of, of that. So definitely want to secure the transport layer, the TLS. Um, that's super easy to do. Next thing you want to do typically is integrate um, authentication. Yeah, um, you want to be, you know, we've got some demos on the emissary ingress site of using a very simple author uh, authentication service that we've written, I think in Go or Node, I think it's in Node. Uh, and it uses basic auth, so like it uses actually the express framework in Node and basic auth. Uh, and it's really like a really simple way to just do authentication at the edge. Uh, because Emissary exposes EXT auth, like a, it's almost like an API, an interface, standard Envoy type interface. So you can plug in anything that implements that EXT auth API. So we've got you know some commercial offerings in that space. There's open source offerings. There's stuff on the interwebs. Be careful what you choose because you know authentication is super important, right? Um, yeah, just just bear that in mind if you're pulling stuff down on GitHub uh, and you think it's doing auth for any ingress, double check it because like that's you know if, if the auth is compromised, game game over, right? Really really quite tricky there. But um, we do expose the yeah, standard uh, APIs for authentication. We also expose um, the rate limit uh, Envoy API in emissary ingress too. So rate limiting is, is sort of closely related to security because obviously you want to secure your transport, you want to authenticate authorize the human coming in and um, but then you might want to stop things like denial of service and um, people accidentally abusing your service you know, maybe you've got a freemium product and the app just runs away and starts calling um, the back end a lot and it degrades the overall uh, experience so you often want to think about rate limiting 
or load shedding. Emissary makes that super easy. I wrote an example rate limiting service in Java. You can find on my GitHub repo, uh, Flynn, and the team wrote a Go-based rate limiting example, which you can find on, on the interwebs too. Um, but those are the most common things, transfer level security, authentication, uh, and rate limiting, I would say. And then hooking up to the observability is, is closely related to that. Um, hooking up to Prometheus, which like Jason's talked about in um, uh, service mesh context too. And then often if you're doing things like distributed tracing, you want to start them at the edge too. So we integrate with um, Zipkin and Jaeger and a bunch of other things there. So that's like observability is often thought about quite a bit too. Awesome. Um, we have a question about uh, doing traffic splitting with emissary. I, I, maybe we, it can also be applied to Linkerd, but Generally, can you guys address this? Yeah, shall I take that one? So yes, there is a canary flag in the mappings. Check it out. And that's what we use when we integrate and with Argo. So we do, we've done a lot of work and had a tip to Costis from CodeFresh, my uh, buddy from the community. He ran a Summer of Kate's um, session. It's like our online free learning um, uh, thing we're doing over the summer. And he broke down how to use Emissary and Edge Stack with Argo uh, rollouts. And then I followed on with Argo CD afterwards as well. Um, but how to do um, canary releasing with all that tech. So um, you can do it manually just by changing the canary, the weighting effectively on different mappings. So you have like mapping stable, mapping canary, and you just change the weights manually and, and you know do a coop cut apply. But like Argo is amazing. Argo CD, Argo rollouts, the whole Argo series of projects are amazing. If you're looking to do um, canary releases, I suggest having a look at, um, at those. And then just to add on, like you might have seen it, but so, so traffic split, depending on what you mean, right? Uh, there's a traffic split. I think there's a traffic split object from the SMI spec. Right, which is which is implemented by Linkerd, right? And when you're connecting these two, just work. Like so, you might have ca caught it in the in the dashboard, but there's actually a, an Argo rollouts install, and Podinfo is using Argo rollouts. So the routing to uh, to podinfo.cvo.59s.io, that's that's actually going to a traffic split object. Now, 100% of the traffic is going to our our green deployment. But you know, we'll do in the summer of Kate session, is it next week, Daniel? A uh, week after. So folks can like check out our Twitters for that. We'll put the details up. Yep. Summer of Kate's week after that, we're gonna show traffic splitting with Argo rollouts, Linkerd, and Emissary, all kind of together rolled into one. But uh, but yeah, that's that's kind of the way it's kind of the way you do it. So there, there's a ton of options. And again, highlighting that it because of the way, because both objects or both projects have a clearly defined set of boundaries and try and do one thing really well, right? They work together super well. And there's no there's no special configuration to, to, to do. Great. Looking forward to that uh, session, actually. Um, I think there are no more questions. Is there anything you wanted to add before we conclude this one? One thing I'll shout out is do get involved in the community. Both these are CNCF projects. LinkedIn has is graduated. We're incubation stage. Um, the community thrives from folks like yourself watching the stream, right? Um, jump on the GitHub repos, uh, have a look at issues. Docs are super, super important. Like Jason and I were just tripping over a couple of doc issues that I'm going to go and fix later on, right? Um, like it's so hard to keep some of the projects up to date. So whether you're an engineer, doc writer, whatever skill set you've got, get involved with the CNCF. And we'd love you, obviously, to get involved with MSR Ingress and Linkerd. But if that doesn't work for you, pick a project, get involved. Yeah, great call out. And we shared the link in the chat. So you can go to each project's um, GitHub, Docs, and everything. Yeah, and then add on slack.linkerd.io is the Linkerd specific Slack if you want to talk to, talk to maintainers or, or get involved there. Love to hear from you. Um, I hang out in both the Linkerd Slack and the DataWire Slack. I find them both really helpful. I got to do a shout out. Good, good joke. So if you go to A8R, so that's ambassador basically, A8R.io slash Slack, you can find our Slack there as well. And we've got like Telepresence, which is another CNCF tool, which we, we steward or we help steward. So you can chat to us there. Like and I, I hang out in all the Slacks, the CNCF, the buoyant ones. And yeah, so you can find us there. Great. Uh, and you can see on screen also just a reminder that KubeCon North America is upcoming. So uh, registration is open for in-person and virtual um, events. Uh, so hope to see you either there or 
uh, on screen. Um, thank you very much, Daniel and Jason. This has been great. I really enjoyed it. Um, I hope to see everyone here again next uh, week, every Wednesday, if we're here. Um, so thank you guys again. Thank you, it's yeah, thanks. Thanks for having us. Sorry, Daniel, <laughs> spoke over you. My bad. Just because I thanks to Ty, thanks to the whole CNCF team. Really appreciate all the support here. Yeah, same. All right. Thank you. Have a good day, everyone. See you, everyone.